Yeah, Thomas from Briggs here. So we've just released Briggs 135 and in typical Briggs fashion, I'm going to show you a quick overview of the main new features. If you head over to Briggs.io slash changelog, you can find the changelog entry with a list of all of the changes here. So in this release, we've got more than 60. The new features are mainly uh, style related. So we're gonna go over those in a minute. But there are also a lot of improvements inside of the builder, the builder interface itself. And as you can see down here, we've also got a lot of bug fixes. So that's something we always focus on as well. Not just to uh, keep adding new features as quickly as possible, but to ensure as the builder itself, uh, the platform itself grows in its feature set, that it's going to grow in a stable and healthy way. So that means also a lot of time spending fixing bugs. All right. So what are we going to have a look at in this video? The first main feature or the biggest feature of this release is the introduction of global CSS classes. So you're going to check that out in the builder and you can now also create your own pseudo classes and pseudo elements. So we can style a specific element state or a part of an element. And that's also something that we're going to explore in the second part of this video. Beyond those styling um, features, we now also support toolset. So if you use the toolset plugin as your dynamic data provider, it's now working with Bricks as well. There are various improvements and new features um, related to the form element and then also to the container element itself and um, you have new flex settings the flex grow flex shrink and flex spaces css properties you can now set those um, visually as well and you can render bricks data inside of the post content element um, that's also a very helpful feature but the only two features I think that need some more explanation here in this video are the global CSS classes and the CSS pseudo classes and pseudo elements. All right, let's dive into the builder. Okay, so I'm here inside the builder and the first feature we're going to explore are CSS classes in Bricks. Now, a CSS class is a set or collection of styles that you can apply to any element on your site. So if you have a certain uh, collection of styles that you want to apply to, let's say, um, different buttons, which is what we are going to do in this video. So we're going to style the button up here and the button here. You would create a class, then you can add your styles visually in Bricks, and then you can just add those to any elements that needs them anywhere on your site. And in order to do this and how we can actually create our class, we would first select our element. In my case, that's going to be the button because we are going to create a class with some button styles. And then up here, you've got this new input by default. You would edit the styles specific to this element here. If we click on this um, element ID, you can now see the CSS class name menu and all we need to do in order to create our class is just to give it a name so i'm gonna call that one button dog and then i'm gonna press enter now my class is created and it's already assigned to this element i also have this little counter up here telling me how many active classes this element has if i click on it you can now see i've got under element classes my button dog class okay so all the styling changes that i will apply now will be added to this CSS class, not to this element itself, but to the class this element is assigned to. All right, let's go to styles and change our background color to dark. And you can already see it's being updated here. Now we can apply multiple changes, as many as you want. In terms of the stylings, I'm just gonna keep this very simple. So I'm gonna style my text color. So now we've got white text color and a dark background. Now, if I were to remove this class from this element, I'm not going to delete it. It's still in my database, but I want to say I don't, I no longer want to use this on this element. I can just go here, click remove. And now you can see the counter is gone. The class is no longer selected and it also doesn't appear here anymore in the preview. Now let's apply it again because I actually want to use it. But I also want to use it down here. So I click on this button. You can see right now it has no active classes. There's no counter. 
um, I click on the element ID. You can now see the list of my classes. If I click this one, I assign it to this element. And then I can also just continue editing this one if I choose to do so. So let's say I wanna change this to a red background color. Now you can see this affects all the elements that have this class assigned to it. So it affects our button up here as well, right? Um, let's undo this. I actually wanna keep this as a dark background color. And let me show you how you can add another class because you're not limited to just add one class to an element. You can add as many classes as you want. So we already got a dark a button dark class. So let's create a light one. So I'm gonna call that one button light, hit enter. And now I've created my second class. You can also see this element now has two active classes. If I view them here, you can see element classes, the dark one and the light one. So this is what's gonna be applied first, the dark one and then my light class. So if both of those classes have the same CSS property um, defined like the background color, the one from the light class is gonna be used because that one takes precedence over the first one here. Um, let's just copy some styles, um, show you how that one works as well. So I can just grab the ones from my dark button and then I can just paste them here to my light button. You can see immediately, uh, I can see the settings indicator. So you can see there has just been a change. My light um, button light class now has those settings as well. And then I can just basically overwrite those. Uh, in my case, I wanna use a light background color and a dark text color, so just the other way around. And you can see now this order is taking precedence. So it first runs the dark style and then the light style. That's why now this one is light. To remove it, again, I can just say, I don't no longer want to use it. Click on the remove icon. And now I just have one active class, which is my button dark. And then we can also rename a class. So let's say you had a typo in your class or you changed your naming system for your classes, then you can just click on the pencil icon. Maybe you wanna prefix it. So I'm gonna call this prefix button dark, make the change, now it's renamed. You can reset the styles as well. If for some reason you wanna start over with your styles without having to manually go through every setting and just clear it, um, you can just go here and reset your styles. Now you can see they've been reset it and they are gone here. And if you want, you can also delete the style. So you can just click here, delete, sure, all right. Now they are deleted. I actually want to apply some styles and let me just bring back this one here. And yeah, that's basically how you would work with CSS classes in Bricks. And that brings us to the second part of this video, which is the uh, pseudo classes and pseudo elements in Bricks 135. So prior to Bricks 135, we only had the ability to edit the hover state, but obviously there are much more states for your website elements. For example, an element could be active. It could have a focus state. Um, for your links, they have a visited state. And that's actually a whole, a very long list of um, element states. I will also provide a link to an article in the video description. You can have a look as a reference um, what's available in case you're not familiar with those states. But yeah, now you can use all of those states. Um, Bricks comes um, with some predefined states, but you can also add your own states via pseudo clauses. So let's just have a look at the most commonly used state, which would be the uh, hover state. And what am I gonna change here? Let me just grab the heading. And let's just say we wanna change the uh, heading color when I hover with my mouse over this heading. Now, in order to do this, um, there's the same control up here. But now when I click it, I'm not entering the hover state because now we have, we can basically choose which state we want to edit. And you can see this new input up here, select or create a pseudo class. So if I click here, I can now see three predefined states or pseudo classes. Um, hover, active and focus. We wanna apply a hover effect to our heading. So I click it and now you can see it's also highlighted and you can see the state that we're currently editing active pseudo class is hover. Now we want to change our text color. Let's just um, say we want to have it red when we hover with our mouse over it. And you can see a preview right now. So we are not editing the normal 
state, we are editing the hover state, but in order not that you have to hover over it and then go back and make another change, that's basically the preview, how it would look like when you hover with your mouse over this heading. Now, once we are done with, um, we've applied all of our changes, in our case, it's just gonna be the text color. We can just leave this state, we can just clear it here. And now we're back into the normal editing mode. Now you can see up here, this little counter, which is basically the same concept that we use for our global classes, telling me that we have one, at least that we have one active pseudo class or pseudo element. So if I click here, you can now see that my um, hover state has a setting because it has this little indicator that we also use down here for our normal settings. And I can see it now if I hover over my heading here that it's gonna change the text color. Now, what you can do, you can also work with CSS transitions in order to make this transition between the normal state and the hover state a bit smoother. So I would just edit my heading or any other element really. Then I can go to uh, CSS and then you can apply a CSS transition. And this can be uh, super simple or you can chain it um, depending on if you want to add different uh, CSS transitions to different CSS properties. But the easiest syntax that you can use is just simply to uh, specify the transition duration. So what you can do, you can just say, I want to have a transition that lasts 0.1 seconds. So you would just put it in like this. And then now you can see if I hover over my heading, I have this transition effect and this only affects this specific element. If you have your button and you apply a hover style, you can set a different um, transition as well. All right. Now that's how you could add a pseudo class such as hover. You can also add your own ones. For example, if you want to style your visited links, you could just create a visited pseudo class, hit enter. And now we actually got our very own um, custom pseudo class. We're not going to work with this one in this video because I want to show you how to use the pseudo elements and pseudo elements in CSS are there to style a specific part of an element. For example, the first letter um, of a, a word or a sentence or when editing um, a paragraph, you could also style the first line of a text paragraph. We're going to show both of those um, use cases, selecting the element again and we will create a I'm going to start with the first letter that's a pseudo element so it's basically prefixed with a double colon I will leave a link in the video description as well about the pseudo elements so you can see a list of all of the available pseudo elements and explore those in more detail um, on your own but yeah, that's basically the one that I would create first for the, to style the first letter of a word. Click save and now we're editing the first letter pseudo element. What this is going to do, because I'm editing my heading here, if I make a change now to my um, typography color, it will change the first letter of my heading, which is this G. Um, so let's change it to this color. And now you can see the change is already being applied. And we can also make a change here, change the font size. If I put this, you can see this only affects the first letter because that's the pseudo element that we are currently editing. Now you can use another one, like I said, for example, we can create a pseudo element named first line. That's another one, hit enter. Now we're editing that one, same principle. And if I change now my text transform to uppercase, you can see now the first line of this um, paragraph here is being styled, nothing else. Um, same goes for the text color. If I want to change that and make it blue, it looks like this. And this is how you work with pseudo elements as well. All right, I think that's everything I wanted to show you in Bricks 135. Of course, there are many more improvements and new features. Make sure to check out the changelog here over at bricksbuilder.io slash changelog. I hope you enjoyed this update. Um, happy building and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.